Uh, good morning. And what I'd like to do is describe a little bit about stimulating some, some thoughts, thinking a little bit about what might be possible. So I am not from the broadcast background, so I'm going to be talking more about what if. And I'd like to just think a little bit with you what might be possible for Singapore as we take a look at some of the opportunities that we have here. And so to get us started, I wanted to start with this particular slide. And I like it for two basic reasons. One, as a Formula One fan, I think it's a beautiful shot of Singapore, and I think it's a great shot of uh, the racetrack and how things look at night, and I just personally like the photograph a lot. But importantly, it helps me to paint a picture, and the picture is really going to be around how is information gathered, how is information used, what can it mean for us in terms of improving services to citizens, what can it mean in terms of business, what can it mean in terms of uh, basically improving everybody's lives. So thinking a little bit about that. And as I move over, I think a little bit about the Formula One car. And I think about the fact that it's wired with 200 and something sensors, obviously sensors around the track. And so as you may already know, every time the car goes around a lap, there is hundreds of different points along which information is gathered or data is gathered. And that really helps the crews decide how they can tweak the performance of the car. They give feedback to the driver, what can they do to make that more effective, and squeeze an extra hundredth of a second out per lap. It's a huge amount of information collected. So for those that are thinking of it in this way, roughly 25 meg of information per lap per car. So you can think of this as really significant amounts of information. The important thing that I want to stress is it's information gathered for the purpose of improving something for the purpose of making something better. It's not gathered for the fun of it. It's gathered in order to try and have a positive outcome on how something is performing. So I'm going to stay with that theme. So now I'd like to pose the question, what if we were able to, what if we chose to, wire up every possible corner of Singapore? What if we were to say that sensors everywhere were to gather millions of pieces of data from everything? So Mark referred to Internet of Things earlier on a moment ago. If we stay with that idea, it's essentially just gathering data from areas. And I want to separate this idea of data versus information. So sometimes people become anxious or uncomfortable when we talk about gathering information. But somehow gathering data seems less scary. So the idea is if we gather data about what's happening and how things can be made better, it seems like it would be a good thing. There's some obstacles. Apart from the legislative side, regulatory side, privacy side, which I'm going to place to the side for the moment, I'd like to talk about whether we could simply do it. So there's some obstacles around, is there a cost that we can afford? Is there a price point at which sensors become affordable to place? everywhere versus in a few locations. How do we maintain them? Because putting sensors out and then having to come back and change batteries becomes impossible if you're talking about millions versus hundreds. And we need to make sure that we can approach this issue in terms of unification. Can we have the sensors communicate with each other as part of a larger fabric versus a sensor for a topic communicating with one out, uh, output or one data point? So the idea, if we think about it, sensors everywhere, we have to think about getting the cost down. We have to think about them being set and forget, low maintenance or no maintenance. And importantly, how can we take energy in an ambient way as opposed to a direct power source? So if we think about these things, is it possible? So what if we made that decision? Now, there's examples where we're using sensors of sorts in a lot of ways already. So. KK Hospital, KK Women and Children's Hospital. The idea of having RFID tags associated with surgical instruments and gauze so that there isn't something left behind, which happens uh, in different environments, because there's just too many pieces, so hundreds of pieces of surgical gauze during the course of an operation. And sometimes that takes a lot of time at the end of an operation to account for those. So having an RFID chip helps somebody quickly and easily capture that with the sort of wave of the wand after everything's been accounted for, 
a final pass of the wand to make sure that nothing is left behind. So there's already uses of sensor type technology. And we think about how this could improve healthcare in a very practical way. But if we go further and we think about something which is already available in the market, like a wearable fabric with sensors embedded, the whole idea here, and I just picked one at random, there's many, is to say that we have opportunities for respiratory, cardio, and other monitoring points. Now, if you think about this longer term, a chronic care or elderly care patient sitting in his or her home with some type of comfortable wearable technology that allows early signs of distress to be determined by the doctor, by the hospital. So instead of the patient having to take an action, there's a way in which wearable technology helps us proactively care for patients. And we think about this in many different textiles already today. So where can this go? The important thing is, in addition to providing superior health care, it also allows a massive new trove of data to be gathered with consent on research. What can I do to learn from hundreds of thousands of patients or millions of patients and find correlations and ways of improving health care that I wouldn't otherwise be able to pursue? If we think about education, we think about kids today learning in classrooms, but we're already seeing a convergence of different types of learning. So smart surfaces and sharing information from student to student or classroom to classroom. So that's already happening. But if we think about it further, and we think about where kids and adults can be going in the months and in the years ahead, the whole idea is out of classroom learning gives a superior opportunity for a wider source of education. So if you think about this photo and the idea of people enjoying taking photographs at an aquarium, what if we had an opportunity for a real-time connect that as a fish swam by, through recognition or chips, we were able to say on the device, this is a such and such, it's got these sorts of characteristics, it lives in these sorts of waters. So there's a much more experiential type of learning. Then you have other examples like Khan Academy, Coursera, and so on, which provide millions of different opportunities for learning. So the whole idea uh, which I'm sure we'll be talking about during the course of this morning, which is if you have a smartphone or a tablet, you essentially have almost all the world's knowledge in your pocket anyway. If I think about it from an environmental perspective, we already have through the Public Utility Board hundreds of sensors in canals and drains to make sure that water's flowing, to make sure that we have early warning. So 10 minute intervals saying, is the water level rising? And if so, what can we do to either warn people or take some uh, action to try and solve that before it becomes a flooding issue. So we already have sensors out in a variety of locations. But now we think about what could that mean in thousands of locations and what could those sensors do to tell us information that would be useful to a variety of agencies and to citizens. So if we use that example, we think about utility. Today people have to read meters and they have to think about the usage that they would have consumed during the course of that month, essentially after the fact. How much did I use? And people have to wonder whether they're being as efficient as they'd like. Through something like this, and you may have already seen these technologies yourself, you can plug an appliance into this type of interface, which then allows you to collect through Bluetooth what that particular appliance is consuming. And you can then chart that, and you have a historical record, and you know what that appliance is using at any time of day or night, and you can say, now that I know that, I'm going to take some action. So the whole theme here is, if I know something, I can take action. If I don't know something, I cannot take action, or the action I take may not be the right action. So part of sensor fabric across the island would be more information in order to improve performance. Performance of energy, or performance of healthcare, or performance of education, public safety, and so on. If I think about Nest, which some of you may have seen, and Google Ventures is a big backer of Nest, if you think about Nest as a learning device, and the idea that it learns whether you like the temperature to be at 22 degrees or 23 degrees at 3 p.m., and learns those behaviors over time so that it becomes a smarter device, and you can control it through a variety of interfaces, this is an example of simply adaptive technology. And if I think of this in thousands of homes or hundreds of thousands of homes, again, providing information upon which to make good choices. So the what if is if we were to build a sensor fabric connecting everything to everything, Singapore has a unique opportunity to do that. Unique in the sense of legislative capability, 
unique in the sense of manageable technology across a manageable area, even though it would be bigger than anything anyone's ever done if we were to do this across the whole island. But there's a couple of things. How could this capability be used for the good of healthcare, education, public safety, energy management, and so on? And we have already taken legislative steps in some of these areas around privacy. There's already some work with infrastructure in place such as the fiber network, the broadband network to 95% of homes and businesses in order to give some of that communication backbone. There's already a big pool of technology talent and we're trying hard to make sure that in cooperation with universities, we're developing more and more talent. So the challenge is for anyone that's in an education environment or in an industry environment, we would love to work with you to think through how would something like this be possible? What are some of the challenges? What are some of the obstacles we have to deal with? What can we do to leap into some of these opportunities in a meaningful way? So I'll close on this particular slide because I think it's the way that I would like to position this for your thinking during the course of this morning. When President Kennedy issued the challenge at the beginning of the 1960s about sending a man to the moon and bringing him home safely, there was not an understanding of how to do that. There was parts and pieces of how to do that, but not a complete picture. So if I think about the entire island of Singapore having a sensor fabric network upon which many applications could be written, many sources of data could be gathered for the purpose of improving performance, we don't know how to do all that. But we have some good ideas. And what we'd like to do as IDA is to make sure that working together with industry, working together with universities, working together with different parts of government, we set ourselves a challenge of thinking, what could be possible? So I like the idea of don't know all the answers, know what we'd like to try and do, need to solve problems along the way to get there. But Singapore has the unique opportunity to be the first smart nation anywhere in the world. All parts of Singapore connected to all other parts of Singapore for good. Thank you very much.